In this screencast, we're gonna talk about Django's signals. It's actually a very fun topic. It's interesting and easy to understand once you get it. The Django signals is based on what's the dispatch design pattern. In other areas, it's also known as the observer pattern. Basically, all it does is it queues up functions that need to be called at a later time. This is especially great for decoupling your code to make sure nothing is tied in too strongly to other parts. The best example usage of this is in third-party applications where you can set signals inside of your applications on events that are happening and in your main application you can tie into those without coupling your application to the third-party app allowing a nice layer of space between the two. An example, a specific example of this is in using webhooks. Oftentimes when you use webhooks it's kind of event driven so in a third-party app that you're consuming or that you write, you might include or have signals that are built into the webhook calls. That allows you and your application to tie into those signals or into those events that are happening in the webhooks. This is useful so that you don't have to go in and start hacking on the third-party application and you can just get down to business using and writing your application. Another usage is in forms in a more tracking manner. In a couple of cases, I've needed to track when people use what form elements, but I don't actually want to track much of what the form is being used for. I just kind of want to send a signal and see, hey, it ran, and I don't care about it after that. Signals are synchronous, so whenever you do write your signals and you consume signals, realize that they're going to execute in the process of a request. That being said, let's go ahead and get started with our code for the day. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a signal class and use that class to create an object that simulates what happens with signals. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually use signals in our Django application. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a signal.py file. In this file we're going to create a signal class that we're going to use to simulate our signals in Django. We aren't going to do as many fancy things as the signal object does in Django, but we're going to get the point across of you needing to queue up a series of functions that can be called at a later date. In our initializers, we're going to create a dot receivers instance variable that we're going to then at a later point set where we can add our receiver functions to them. Next, we're going to create an output function as a simulation to see what we're, what's going to happen. All it's going to do is it's going to print out our receivers instance variable. And in the console, this should just be basically a collection of functions. Next, we're going to create our connect method. This is actually similar to what's going to be in Django because we need to queue up our functions and our connect method is what's going to be used to queue up our functions of our signal. It's actually fairly simple. We just append a function that we're going to pass in through the receiver variable to our receiver's instance variable and then later on that's actually going to be called. The reason we're using the connect method name is because it's the same name that's in our signal class in Django. Now that we have something basic working Let's go ahead and try to use our object a little bit. First, we're going to create a function named called, and all it's going to do is print something to the console. Next, we're going to instantiate signal first and assign it to s. Then we're going to call the connect function and pass it our called function in. After that, we're going to call our output function, and it'll just show out a list of all of the functions. To show that things are being queued up, let's go ahead and add another function call, connect that to our signal object, and then do an output. And as you can see, we now have two functions that are being output in our collection from our output function. Now that we're successfully queuing up our functions, whenever we connect the functions to our signal object, it's actually time to do the work of our signal object and call those functions. What we're going to do is we're going to create a send method. This is the same method that is in Django, and this is what's going to call all of our functions. Since receivers is a collection of functions, all we're going to do is we're going to iterate over our collection, and as each function is come upon, we're going to execute them. Then we're going to go down and where we instantiated our signal object. After we've connected our functions, we need to call a send function so that each of those functions are actually executed. Since we've added our send method, which is going to execute each of our functions, let's go ahead and run this and watch it output the number of functions in our queue and the output from each of the functions.
In the last section, you learned how to make a signal class and actually use it. It's fairly reminiscent of what would happen if you were to use the signals in Django. So since we understand how it basically works, let's actually go and use uh, signals in Django. We're going to use our to-do app, and we're going to do all of our work in our models. The interesting thing about signals are you need to find a place to put them where they'll initialize quick enough in the process of running your Django application, and usually putting them in a signals.py file inside of your application then importing them in your models is a good way to do this. We're just going to do everything on our models file just to save time and make it easier. First thing we're going to do is we need to import from django.dispatch. We need to import our signal class. And then simply we need to define a signal. What we're going to do is we're going to pass it in a keyword argument of, of providing args. And then we're going to pass it a collection of all of the acceptable keyword arguments that we can pass to our functions that we're going to create and queue up in our signal. The next thing that we need to do is we need to define our function that we're going to queue up in our signal. Simply enough, we need to just define a normal function. We're going to do notify people because in a sense we're going to act as if every time we do something we're going to notify people. That's what we're simulating is going to happen. To define it you need to use a sender as your first argument. This is useful if you want to restrict what function is called based on the specific model that's being um, sent in or a specific object that you're using as your sender. And then quargs is what we're going to use to pass data to our function that we're going to be using. What, we, what we're going to do is we're going to print out the data that we're going to send and the easiest way to get that data is to just call the get function on our quargs parameter and then pass it the name of the quark of the keyword argument that we're going to pass in. And then finally we're just going to print out something. The next thing that we need that we're going to do is we're actually going to connect our function. This looks exactly the same as we did in our signal object that we created earlier. We're just going to do inform.connect notify people. And with that we have our signal actually defined. We have our function that we're going to call defined and we have our function that we're going to run actually queued up and ready to go for the moment that we're ready to use it. Now all we need to do is we need to actually call it somewhere. So in our item model, we're going to define a method named notify. Inside of notify, we're going to create a small list and add it to data. We're going to put some data in our data variable. And then finally, we're going to call our send method on our signal. We're going to pass in the sender. In this case, the sender is the item object. So we'll just do self. And then we want to pass in data. We're ex only able to accept the data keyword argument when we pass in our data. So we're going to assign data data equal to data. And with that, I think we're actually ready to look at this. To test it, we're simply going to open up our interactive uh, shell and import our model. And once we have our model imported, we're just going to define a new item and then we can call our notify method. As you can see, once we call our notify method, it output the list that we sent it and then also output our other statement. That's all fine and dandy, but what if we want to do something a little more useful and on every save, we want to notify people that something happened. Well, that's simple. We have our inform signal that we created earlier, so we can just again call our send method on that. And then we also want to pass it data. In this case, though, we just want to pass it self.slug, so to show some data that we got that's more dynamic than what we listed earlier. This also shows that it doesn't have to be a collection, it can just be a string that you pass. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and open up our interactive shell again. I've already done our import and created our item object with our required fields. Next, let's just go ahead and hit the save method. As you can see, it ran, it passed the slug in and called our function. Now that that's taken care of, let's go ahead and add another function to, into the mix. In this case, we're just going to go below notify people and create a new function called notify admins. It's going to be pretty much the exact same, so I'll just fill in the code. The only trick here is that we want to go ahead and hook this up and connect it to our signal. And instead of doing an inform.connect, we're going to use a handy receiver decorator that comes built into Django. So we need to do our import. And then above our function call, we need to actually use our receiver and pass it the inform signal that we have defined already. So let's jump over to our interactive shell again. Everything's already filled out and ready to go. And let's run the save method. And as you can see, it's actually gone ahead and run both functions and passed along our slug. 